Right now, Joe Biden enters the race atop all uh, of at least the majority of polls. He, you know, there's part of this is a function of name recognition. Uh, Bernie and Joe Biden have the highest name recognition of any of the uh, candidates in the race at this point. Um, it doesn't account for all of their lead, but certainly a significant uh, a portion of it. Um, and I think the one could argue that at the very least, when it comes to positions, I would be willing to bet. And to be fair, I haven't seen any um, I haven't seen any type of poll like this, but I would be willing to bet that if you were to list 10 issues and put in a column, you know, what does Joe Biden believe? And do the same exercise with Bernie Sanders that Bernie Sanders supporters, 25 percent, let's call it, you know, in these uh, polls versus Biden's uh, supporters, let's call it 28 uh, percent just for the heck of it. That I would bet a lot of those Biden supporters don't realize the positions he's taken uh, when he was actually in the business of taking positions that weren't uh, a function of him being vice president. Um, and here is Joe Biden. Is this him announcing? Uh, uh, is, this, is this his announcement? Yeah, here's his announcement right here, and he pegs it to uh, Trump's uh, budget, which, of course, is not ever going to happen. But I was going to stay away from this, but I can't. Did you see the budget was just introduced? It cuts, it cuts $845 billion, almost a trillion dollar cut in Medicare. And almost a quarter trillion, $240 billion cut in Medicaid. Why? Because of a tax cut for the super wealthy that created a deficit of $1.9 trillion, and now they got to go make somebody pay for it. Something that gave millionaires and billionaires excessive tax breaks. And who are they asking to pay for it? Middle class families like you, the neighborhood I grew up in. Trading Medicare and Medicaid for tax breaks? How that's going to help anybody in this room or most of the people you live with? How's that going to help this country? Uh, he was hinting at in, in that speech that he was going to declare. He declared, I guess, today. Yeah, right? he announced, if only there and, were a candidate running who's willing to go after the millionaires and billionaires. Right. I know. We're not going to talk about Bernie right now. We're going to talk about Biden. And so uh, Biden is running uh, a campaign that I think um, sounds exactly like one you would have run 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, right? And um, I think over the course of this campaign, it's going to be clear in the in Democratic primary voters are going to want more than this. And Can I ask a question, though? Isn't it very well reported, and I'm trying to find source here, but when Obama offered the worst yeah. of the— Okay, you're getting, I'm getting, to, I'm getting that. to that. That's Biden, that. right? Yes, yes. Um, and so uh, the problem is that uh, Biden's um, Biden's record is going to catch up with him. And specifically in the idea of cutting Medicare and cutting so-called uh, entitlements, which are um, a, a, a silly name. They're simply programs that uh, they're social insurance programs that people have paid into. Um, during the Obama administration, and longtime listeners of the show will remember this, because every time Digby would come on the program, we would talk about it. Um, from day one of the Obama administration, ja literally day one, in, ja in January of 2009, Obama was on record as saying that we're going to have to have some type of entitled re reform. And he was looking to cut Social Security and to perhaps raise the eligibility age for Medicare. This was on the agenda for at least four years, nearly four years. First, certainly uh, from 2010 to 2012, 
It was near the top of the agenda for the Obama administration. They were trying to cut Social Security through um, the way that they were going to index cost of uh, living increases. They were floating this idea of, of raising the eligibility age for Medicare. At one point, Obama was seeking a grand bargain with uh, the Republicans. And Joe Biden was the lead person in the Obama administration who went to John Boehner and said, here's the deal we will give you. We want modest tax increases on the rich. And we will put on the table cuts to Social Security. In fact, this deal was on the table for almost a year. If it were not for the lunatics in the Freedom Caucus <laughs> who did not want to empower John Boehner, and refuse to accept any increases in taxes because of the nature of their supporters, Barack Obama would have successfully cut Social Security and perhaps raised the uh, eligibility age of Medicare with the help and understand how this works in an administration. They don't randomly pick an emissary. It's the opposite. Those people who have the proposals come and propose the deal to the president. And the president says, I agree with that proposal. I dispatch you to go out and do it and make it happen. This, this idea, well, was, there was no reluctance, I can assure you, on the part of Joe Biden for this. And so it's incredibly disingenuous. And, and, and how do we know that this guy... Uh, could have bought into something like that. All you need to do is look at his record. He entered into the Senate as a, a conservative when it came to everything but, well, here it is. When it comes to 1974, he told, he told the Washingtonian, when it comes to civil rights and civil liberties, I'm a liberal, but that's it. I'm really quite conservative on most other issues. In fact, he went on, a lot of us sit around thinking up ways to vote conservative just so we don't come out with a liberal rating. <laughs> That's what he said. I believe that, and I think that lasted through at least the aughts. Yep. Um, he, he had a fairly liberal foreign policy um, uh, record relative to the era, which was more conservative than it is now. <laughs> but when it came to his domestic politics in terms of like what material benefits he was willing to provide for banks and wealthy people versus the rest of Americans, the Joe six pack guys that he really relates to because he likes trains. He voted more with Reagan uh, than he did anybody else. He voted for the omnibus Reagan tax bill. I remember this. I was actually interning in D.C. in 86. Getting beer for a uh, congressman from Quincy, Mass. Every day, that was my job. Joe Biden's an asshole, dude. Uh, yeah, beer. He cut that top income tax rate from 70% to 50%. It exempted many families from the estate tax. He called for a spending freeze on Social Security. Um, his pitch in 87 was very much in line with Bill Clinton's. It was very much government is the problem. The era of big government is over. Government's an obstacle. We're going to work around that. We need to, he, wrote, he said, quote, we must demand more of ourselves, our managers, our workers, our consumers are needed to change their attitudes to revitalize society because government is not, that's not what government's for. Um, he 
was uh, deeply in favor of the welfare reform. He voted for the Rigel Neal Interstate Banking Act, which allowed banks to expand across state lines. He voted to repeal Glass-Steagall, which he said he regretted in 2016. That was a couple years too late to regret that. Um, he voted to bar federal or state supervision of credit uh, default swats. I mean, there's a reason why they called him uh, DMVNA. Now, Delaware, to be fair, is um, a garbage all the, place. Well, it's all where all the um, the credit card companies come because they, they can avoid all sorts of taxes there. A garbage place. Um, but it's not a question of him being the sort of like serious um, uh, lefty who had to just make some compromises. He got elected from there because he was one of them. He's that, that's the oxygen he breathes. He was instrumental in the overall of America, uh, uh, overhaul of American bankruptcy law. And um, this bankruptcy law was done to protect the interests, uh, the interests of credit card companies who were afraid that American families could go into bankruptcy and be shielded and get some type of bankruptcy relief from their credit card debt. Now understand if you're a company or you're like Trump Inc., you go into bankruptcy and you get your debts relieved. He did not want this to happen with American families when they owed money to credit card companies. Elizabeth Warren, I think at that time, if I remember correctly, was, I think, writing on uh, a, a section of Talking Points memo as a law professor at Harvard going, this is incredibly cruel. And we see all these medically induced bankruptcies. We see all of these uh, other bankruptcies um, just horrible for folks. He also wasn't so great on rates back in the day. Or just, can I just add one quick, really quick? That's why his new, like, I don't want to hear millennial, millennials complaining is not just a gaffe. It's a reflection of a worldview. Well, absolutely. So, yeah. He, I mean, look, yeah. the best defense you could, you could make for this guy is, well, you have to understand, his politics formed in another era. And that's why they are so out of touch today. So, well, I, I think that's a perfectly fine defense but it is exactly the reason why he shouldn't even be running. Yeah, and a lot of other people running are pretty old too, so. I mean, uh, that's true. Uh, uh, that's true. I mean, uh, Sanders is the same age. Uh, Warren, uh, more or less the same age. Uh, Warren, of course, was not in politics at that time, and Sanders is, is fairly unique in, in uh, U.S. politics. And when he says he's liberal on civil rights issues, um, does that extend to measures to integrate schools, like, say, uh, busing? It did not at that time. It did not at that time. No, there's going to be a lot more uh, coming out about Joe Biden. Also, people start talking about uh, the reason why Anita Hill was the lone accuser of Clarence Thomas that most people know of, it's because Joe Biden prevented the three women who had other stories about Clarence Thomas from testifying. These are all things you're going to hear a lot of in the coming days and weeks. Now, with that said, there's value for other candidates for Joe Biden to be in there. Thank you. I think, I think it helps uh, Bernie. I also um, I do want to watch, you know, disingenuous pundits who, you know, are constantly lying about Bernie to see how they handle Joe Biden's in actuality tremendously problematic record. Yeah, that's going to be fun. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. Battle of the old white guys. Uh, I, I can't wait to see how centrists are going to spin uh, Biden as the more uh, racially sensitive candidate. I'm sure they're going to try, but. I, it's not going to be hard. Really dealt you? with him with the invasion of Iraq yet. I mean, it's incredible. You can go through any single metric that somebody will be voting and thinking on, whether it is the so-called identity issues or the so-called economic issues or foreign policy. And this guy 
is a just a catastrophe when but he is a talented politician and he does have a certain charisma that people in that's outside of true. this world like and should not be under without a doubt and he's friends with obama without a doubt you saw the, the memes yeah the 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 speech that he gave at that fireman's that 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 is extremely effective yep. for those folks yep. um well what's going to be very difficult for people to swallow is i mean look the reason why uh barack obama picked picked him as a running mate and they may very well be i, I imagine they're good friends by now um he needed foreign policy experience. And frankly, Joe Biden, when he went out there and said that, you know, uh, Barack Obama was a very clean and articulate uh, black guy. I don't know if people remember that. I don't uh, think he said black guy, but yes, he did say clean and articulate. It was implied. It was bad enough. Um, <laughs> it was basically, he became, he became for Obama what Al Gore thought Joe Lieberman was going to be for him, right? Joe Lieberman was the big moral scur, you know, the, the, the big voice the moral of morality scold okay. against uh, Bill Clinton. And so Al Gore wanted Joe Lieberman as a way of, uh, of, of, of being able to say, I'm at arm's length from Bill Clinton. I'm just concerned a huge that mistake. the blowjobs are really distracting us from banning video games and killing Arabs. Right, exactly. <laughs> and I think in many respects... Joe Biden was the, you know, provided for Obama the same type of like message to the to the to the broader country. Like I'm an arm's length from, you know, guys like Jesse Jackson and those those other types that Joe. I mean, I think like there was a similar dynamic there. And so, uh, you know, we'll see. I don't think he's a white guy. It's not just that he's a white he's, guy. He's like got the same kind of a populist vibe, which Bernie also has, but used to completely different ends. Right. I, I don't, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm saying something different. I'm saying not just that he's a white guy. There's a lot of white guys. We've had a lot of white yeah, guys. Yeah, but run. like he There's, appeals to like the people who might've got mad at Obama for like guns, God, and religion. That's right. That's right. And, and he not talks only, like your grandpa, who's not trying to be racist, but still kind of is. He had a, a sort of a blue collar type of quality and also a sort of like, a, you know, a, a, I think that perspective too. somebody who was you know, against uh, against the uh, busing, against the uh, school integration. Um, and regardless of, of, of whether one thinks that that was the politics of that era, um, that is not the era we live in anymore. I also um, do. I do. It's way less important, but the way he had to drop out of 88 because I, but it speaks to plagiarism? some of his author, Right. I mean, he plagiarized speeches from Neil Kinnock, who was the Labor Party leader, and they were the very personal passages. They weren't like, oh, I like the way he formulated that argument for infrastructure investment. It was like, you know, I grew up in the coal mines kind right, of rhetoric, right. like very weird stuff to be plagiarizing. So maybe even when he does put that across, you have to question some of the sincerity of it, too. I'm calling it. We're going to hear a lot of stories about him being a groper and they're going to come soon after he announces. You think so? That is my prediction. We'll see. Um, well, we'll see. We should we should. We should get like a pool going once everybody's jumped in. Beto's going to jump in. I actually think that Biden is good for Beto uh, because he can draft. He can sort of like draft behind um, um, uh, Biden. I think there. I think he is. I. I think though it's 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 going to be interesting to me. Uh, and again, I'll only frame this in terms of, of Bernie because this is a hit on Bernie. Bernie's been very clear. That like I'm in this to win it. I'm incredibly serious about it, and he's he's already taking it off the table. A Democrat needs to win. Period. Joe Biden uh, has borderline endorsed Republican House candidates, which we played clips of, and Beto O'Rourke specifically has refused to support. I forget her name, but a very progressive candidate because of a personal uh, herd. He's friends with herd. So I do think I think what's interesting in some ways like. Biden, it's either going to be that everybody discovers his policy history and all of a sudden he just tanks, which is possible, or it could be 
most Democratic primary voters doesn't mean he wins, but he's just he's just inoculated. Like it doesn't matter. We know him. We like him. I think in Beto's case, I think there is much more of like a, you know, it's even like me. I love Beto O'Rourke when he's running against Ted Cruz. <laughs> But what are your positions on oil? What are your positions on endorsing fellow Democrats? So I don't know. I think it could be trickier than Beto than we realize. And I think Biden is more inoculated in a way because of his age and the way he's just been around forever. You know. Well, I, for one, cannot wait to hear what kind of nickname Trump comes up with for him. For Joe Biden? Yeah. What, doesn't he have one already? How did he not have one in the... Dopey Joe. Handsy Joe. Dopey Joe. 